Welcome to Saturday Night Live. Tonight's going to be awesome. We're going to talk about authenticity. You guys excited? And the authenticity's got crazy amounts of power. It's like all of your power lies in authenticity. And I, I learned this one the hard way. So I'm excited to teach you guys this um, lesson that I've learned and hopefully um, help you guys um, avoid a lot of the pitfalls on this spiritual quest we're on. I can't wait to get started. You guys ready? Awesome. You guys are ready to talk about authenticity. So have you guys been dealing with some authentic issues? Kind of wondering who you are anymore? Not really sure where where you need to be? And pining for the olden days, maybe from when you were younger, right? Maybe when you were younger, more rebellious, truer to your authentic self. There was a sense of, there was this happiness in that in that time period which is a time period that doesn't exist because it's all now. It's pretty exciting. So, are you guys ready? Awesome. So, what is it to be authentic? Like, what does that even mean, right? Like, <laughs> okay, being authentic, this is me. I still feel like, feel still like crap. And it's because we don't know what authenticity is. And it's a really, really difficult thing to find. And, and yet, And yet, just like everything else, and spiritual transformation it's right here in front of your face it's the simplest thing it's the simplest thing it's the easiest thing in the world to do but the ego makes this the most difficult thing to do because when you get in touch with your authentic self you're getting in touch with the shadow and the shadow is the nemesis to the ego okay they're their counterparts to each other which we'll get into I don't want to get too far ahead of myself so what is it to be authentic? What does that mean? And what took me the longest time to realize what authenticity is, is who are you when you're alone? When you're, when finally you're, whoever it is you're living with, or maybe you are alone, or maybe you live with parents or whatever, when you get that moment and everyone's gone and no one's looking, who are you? Who's that person? Who's that person when you're not afraid of any judgment, when you're not afraid of anyone pointing a finger or making a snicker judging you in some sort of way it's all about that judgment right we hate being judged and yet the judgment is us judging others because it's just a projection of who we become Isn't that crazy so what happens is we we bottle this part of ourselves up when we're not being our authentic self this part of ourself that we are when we're alone is imagine it being like a hose of in the hose has got the water flowing out of it right and it's coming out and when you're authentic there's nothing there, there's no pretense there's nothing stopping it from flowing all the way the, the 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 valve is all the way open and you're just freely expressing whatever comes to your mind without pretense and this is a very very key thing here I want you to really try to get an understanding of without pretense without hesitation without um I shouldn't do that because someone's gonna judge me for it or um I shouldn't do that because my mom hated me for that or I shouldn't do that because someone's gonna laugh or I shouldn't do that because I was told that was wrong that that's the thing you have to get in touch with now obviously that thing can't be something that that hurts other people because that's going to create karma for yourself so you're going to have to find ways to deal with that but most of the time our shadow self are just our insecurities it's just all of our insecurities in fact what happens is um, as we're developing uh, our, our personality as a, as a child we we are approved of things and we are disapproved of things. So as we learn new new things about ourselves and even before we have a self, but as we're acquiring this new knowledge and we're, and we're um, learning new ways of expressing what we're processing, that expression comes out and then our parents, if they're good parents, tell us that that's a good thing or a bad thing. And if it's a good thing, we, we make that part of our ego and that becomes the personality of the ego but if it's a bad thing and a shameful thing well then that gets filed away into this thing called the shadow 
it, it goes into a filing cabinet of the things I'm not supposed to do or the things I'm not supposed to say. So getting back to this pretense, what, we, what we're shooting for is um, just a, allowing that shadow where we filed all of that all of that stuff that we've been told is bad about ourselves. When we're alone, we let that flow freely. We let the, all of that flow freely. And then when we're around people that we think we might judge us for that, we close that valve at least halfway, and we only show the part that we want other people to see. And we reserve all these parts to ourselves that we, we don't uh, want other people to see. And here's the crazy thing. Everyone is doing this. Everyone. There's not one person here that's not dealing with a shadow self. This is just the nature of, of mind development. And this is just the nature of what it is to be a human. Now, here's the thing. This is where we get into working on yourself. And I don't want to get too far ahead of it here. But if you can choose to work on yourself and, and, and choose to integrate your shadow, you become a whole person because you found a way to open that valve of who you really are all the way and in that letting go of fear and letting go of shame and letting go of all of those weird feelings that make you feel bad about yourself then we're being our we're being the full embodiment of our spiritual self we're allowing our full self to come through our full sense of self without pretense. You guys are with me? Yes? Awesome. So, here we are with this shadow. And I'm going to show you something here to kind of illustrate this a little bit better. Joseph Campbell um, drew this in one of his presentations. And uh, Joseph Campbell, I'm a huge fan of Joseph Campbell. He, uh, he was a philosopher, writer, historian, very, very famous in his day, um, and wrote a book called A Hero of a Thousand Faces, which is all about um, these these echoing um, traits of every story that's ever been told. Every, every good story that's been passed down for generations um, hits these key markers, and he's, he deciphered this code of markers, and he calls it the hero's journey, and it has a tremendous philosophical implication, which we'll get into. That's a whole other show. But for now, um, part of many of his lectures, and I, I really encourage all of you to learn as much about him as possible, Joseph Campbell. Um, he put up this, this chart describing the shadow self. And I think it's so beautiful. There's a much more uh, detailed one that Carl Jung uh, made, and I'm going to show you that later. But this kind of like is the intro level of to what the shadow self is. So can you guys see this? So as we're developing our brain, we have um, all of the good features, all the things that mommy and daddy tell us are good, go into the ego box. Okay? And then everything that we think is bad and it's been, we're, we're, we're ashamed for goes into the place called the shadow. And it gets filed away in these filing cabinets. Now, why is this important? Why is this important? and the scope and context of everything that we talk about here on this show. Because what we perceive as reality is a comparison contrast between the experience at hand compared to a previous experience, a, a previous aspect of ourself, an, a, a more inner aspect of ourself. And that contrast is projected in front of us as our reality. Right? So the things that you are seeing out in front of you are reflections of the inner self. But not are they, they're not just reflections of who you, who you think you are, but it's also a reflection of the shadow self. It gets reflected in the mirror too. And that's all of the stuff that we would call the negative things in our life, all of the trauma in our life, all the crazy things that happen to us is the reflection of this shadow personality, and it, is a per it has a personality just as sophisticated as the ego, and it lives dormant in, in you. And you can even say that this is who the adversary is if you really want to narrow it down to nuts and bolts of the adversary. Let's just say that the adversarial energy utilizes the shadow in a very, very significant way to oppress you in this dream. 
So if you can wrangle in this shadow, you're limiting how much that adversary can can hurt you. If that makes sense. Awesome. Can you see that everything I've just talked about is happening in this image, right? That it's a reflection. He's the the, the tree, the person, and the dog are all reflections of these diff, these other aspects of self. So it's a projection of the shadow, and then it's interpreted by the by the ego. And the anima, anima, and animus. There, we'll get into on another show. That's another. That's another layer to this. It's the, the masculine and feminine aspects of ourselves, where each person has a masculine a, uh, aspect to themselves and a feminine aspect to themselves. And that is the outer core. So you've got the the um, the inner core that you call yourself is the ego. And then behind that is the shadow self. And then behind that is the anima animus. And I'm back. Pretty wild, right? Pretty wild. So this shadow thing is is like deep. It it really, really is affecting your life in very, very, very profound ways. Um, there's a there's a case that I had read about, and I'm pretty sure it's from a young uh, Carl Jung book or an interview. I'm not 100% sure where I heard it, but I know it has been to do with Carl Jung. And he tells a story of about um, a, a man that he was a, a patient who was having a lot of issues with um, saying the wrong thing. He's constantly putting his foot in the mouth. And evidently, this is a really, really big deal because he would just blurt out the wrong thing the things that he thought were funny but were just highly highly inappropriate um to the point that his his family wanted nothing to do with him anymore and he had just been he lost his children he had lost his wife and his marriage and everything had just gone to gone to shit for him and uh maybe we'd say that that's asperger's today or something like that but he just was just blurting out what was on his mind and uh, Carl Jung had looked into, had recognized the connection to the shadow self with him and uh, got into finding out that this guy uh, just liked being funny. He was like, a, he considered himself a class clown. And I don't know if Jung had suggested what he had done, but they had come through the, through the, the, uh, the, the practice that they were having. Uh, the man ended up becoming a clown, a professional clown. So in a sense, he was allowing the shadow to express himself. He became a full-time professional clown. And when he took off the clown outfit, he was perfectly normal. It's like he let that expression come out. It was, it was so much pressure inside of him that it needed to come out, and it was coming out in all these inappropriate ways. But the minute he allowed himself to be the clown, literally be the clown, all of those negative traits went away and his life totally, totally improved, which is amazing. And it's just one example of, of something that you can apply to yourself. How many people out there who have the, um, the clown in them, the clown shadow in them? Give me a heart if you're dealing with that too. So maybe not necessarily a clown shadow, but we've all got this unique aspect to our personality that's buried inside. Just as many, uh, just as there's many um, personalities on the outside, there's equally as many different different personalities on the inside. And shadow work uh, is, is is all about allowing that personality to express itself and have and have a voice and have a voice. Um, and this goes into where we talk about how Terrence McKenna always says that culture is not your friend, that culture is an aspect of the adversary. Because of culture, we, we don't, we, it's because of culture that we ha even have a shadow self. It's, it's the shunning of what is inappropriate, and that becomes the shadow self. You guys with me? Now, before I get too, too deep into this, let me clarify that a lot of what I talk about on this show is Zen and non-duality, non-dualism. So the idea of shadow work um, is kind of a misnomer because you can have, it, it implies that you have to do some sort of work to uh, 
to attain the enlightened state of the Father that we talk about a lot in here. That uh, to attain that state of all-knowing bliss, that the the knowing of who you are, the knowing of freedom from uh, an illusory reality. So the idea of having to do an action step and work on the self to improve the self seems like it, it's a it seems like a paradox, and it is a paradox. A lot of Zen teachings are paradoxes because it depends on the lens through which you're looking at it through. Are you looking at it through the lens of the Father, the one that is eternally present? Or are you looking at it through the lens of the, of the Son, who is immersed in the dream, immersed in linear time that doesn't exist? Right? Or are you looking at it through the feminine, which is the Holy Spirit? Those three lenses have very different perspective of what's happening. And it's all about that. So once again, it's about that identity shift, that identity shift from ego to shadow, to father, to son, and to Holy Spirit. And that, that moving around between those different states of identity is how you work on yourself. And um, it, shadow work is not something that you're going to do in a single session. Shadow work is a many, many years thing to work on. And there are lots of people out there who are experts on shadow work. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend to uh, teach you shadow work. There's a million channels dedicated to it. But there is uh, what they're teaching is, is very, very, very significant. And it will have a profound, profound effect on your life in a, in a major, 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 major way. In a way, what you're doing is you're going to be deconstructing who this, this false self of who you've become and rebuilding yourself like a, like the phoenix rising from the ashes this new self that is that has integrated the shadow that is that has brought the shadow the, the best parts of the shadow and the best parts of the ego together to be who you are and you're the you're the cook you're the artist you're the one that gets to weave that together you're the one that decides this element I like about myself, this element I don't like about myself. This element has to be here because it makes me feel this like this. This element has to go because it makes me feel like this. And you just keep mixing around the ingredients. You, you build who you are. Who says, that, who says that you have to be who you've always been? Show me a rule that says you always have to be the person you are now. You could be a different person every single day if you wanted to. That's what's fun for you. So you guys with me working on the shadow self? So I rather than talk about uh, doing shadow work and, uh, and exactly what it is that you have to do, I want you to guys to get into that on your own. And um, I'm going to recommend a couple of channels for you to follow. One is um, Diamond Net on YouTube. She's really, really, really great. And her whole channel is all about shadow work. And it's like I said, it's an endless practice. There's a million things that you can do to work on yourself. I'm just here to tell you that that integration is, is absolutely incredible. So I thought the best way to talk about this would be to talk about my own personal struggle with, uh, with the shadow. And, and I think I don't, I don't expect your shadow to look anything like my shadow. But in this story of me telling you about my shadow um, and how I've learned to integrate it, and I'm still learning how to integrate it. I've got a long ways to go. Don't think for a second I've got this nailed. But I'm working on it, and I do see light at the end of the tunnel. But I think by telling you this, you can apply uh, what, I'm, what I went through metaphorically into your own life, and hopefully it'll help in some awesome way. By the way, we're listening to 528 Hertz. Solfeggio on the Fly Tribe channel. So I hope you guys go over there and listen to that tonight. 528 is gonna be really, really good for this um for this last for this this satsang lesson, I guess. It has to do with the heart chakra. Integration of the heart chakra. It's the integration from um the metaphysical to the physical. It's the point that that conversion takes place is 528 hertz. So it's really, really helpful. Let me get really egoic and talk about myself for a second. <laughs> okay. Um, when I was younger, um, 
I've been dealing with gender dysphoria my entire life. And it's no secret here. I talk about it all the time. Shells is in the house. What's up? I love you. So, um, yeah, it kind of ruined my whole childhood. It gave me a really, really hard time in school. And I was really a loner because of it. I, uh, it was like having this big secret that no one could find out what it is. And, and uh, dysphoria is like an all-consuming secret. It's just, um, unless you have it, I don't think there's a way to describe it. There's just no way to accurately describe it. And it has nothing to do with clothes, it has nothing to do with makeup, it has nothing to do with identity, it has nothing to do with any of these things that, um, that culture has tried to sell us on what this thing is in the last few years. All that stuff is complete bullshit. But, um, but it, it, there, it, is a, it, is, it is a mental illness. It's a mental tick. It's, a, it's an issue. <laughs> it's definitely an issue that, uh, that's been there and, and tortured me quite badly. And I think um, I, I could look at my life as a victim, which I don't, because all of that suffering uh, as a youth, without that suffering, I wouldn't have devoted my life to music. And through that devotion to music and finding a way to express all of these feelings I couldn't express through my music, A, it was an outlet for me, and it created this beautiful career and life that I enjoy now. So. Everything has good and bad elements. We talk about all the time, right? So try to look at your shadow the same way. As much as it may have ruined your life, that you want to just crawl in bed and put the blanket over your eyes and just go, God, I hate life. I'm just such a victim. Life sucks. That, that torture has also shaped who you are. It's made you stronger. It's made you more introspective. It's made you want to be a better person it's made you want to come check out this channel and be a part of the Ford's playground because all that's what this channel is about right so th the sheer fact that you're here means that you're working on it and you have the drive and passion so uh yeah being tortured by this thing and I didn't really know what to do with it in my 20s I came out to my parents when I was 15 and that went over like a lead balloon and it was, it was in the 80s, it was 1980s, uh, late 80s, or mid 80s, I guess. And uh, when, I, when they threatened to put me into a mental, mental institution, I ought to set, automatically just said I was cured, and that was the end of the discussion. But I can't blame my parents, it was a different time back then. This was a very weird, weird, weird thing back then. In the, in the late 80s, it was very weird to be gay, and, and transgender was like, that was like the next freak show up beyond anything that anything that anybody wanted to talk about. So uh, that went pretty, pretty really bad. And I'm talking about this because this this dysphoria is what the is what made a lot of the creation of what the shadow is because all of the things that I was shameful about, all of the all of that harboring of this negative energy the fear, the shame, the disgust, the hatred for myself, all of that became the components of what my shadow self is. And it grew into this gigantic monster because it was never addressed. It was never addressed through my childhood. It was only started, I only started to address it in my late teens when I came out to my parents. But even that wasn't really addressing it because nothing was let out. And then when I was in my early 20s is when I transitioned. I moved away from home and I transitioned from male to female. <laughs> so yes, yes, conversion therapy, but you gotta give them a break. It was, it was the mid 80s, it wasn't like it is today. So it's, it's, it's just very, very, very different. And conversion therapy never works. No, you're absolutely right about that. So in my 20s, my early 20s, I transitioned and I didn't have any surgeries or anything like that. I did start taking uh, estrogen and some other hormones and and w went and lived full time as a, as a woman. My parents had no idea. I was in flight school. I played in a band. And then when I would go home, I would just be like their normal son and I would go back home and, you know, and, and, and be who I thought I was. And, uh, you know, I, I was a musician, had long hair, so it, it didn't really matter. No one really suspected a thing. But I was who I thought I was to everyone else around me, but I was still too shameful to show who I was around my family. There were even certain friends who I didn't let know. I would, I, would be, I would keep it secret from them too. So there was this 
crazy uh, drama of a balancing act. I, I had to constantly decide if I was a man or a woman, depending on who I was going to meet, and the stress of all this, uh, of who, which person I was going to show to the world. And the more that I started to accept myself and started to accept that aspect of myself, suddenly I was having success. Suddenly everything was working for me. Everything. I, I had a beautiful girlfriend. I got a great job making music. I had a hit record. And then just everything was just wham, wham, wham. All these great things were happening to me. And my career was just taking off like a rocket ship. I mean, to be 25 years old and working at a record company making music for your living, that was pretty, pretty amazing, especially back then. That was, that was like really something. And then after I started getting records on the radio and having hit songs on Billboard, it was, wow, here I go. I'm going to be like a rock star. This is awesome. And um, so life was good and had a huge hit on the radio and started doing some touring. And by this time, I was, I was thir- just about 20, 29 to 30 years old. And I had been on hormones for about six years, I think. And I grew pretty big breasts. I mean, it just is what it is. Good genetics. None of this is surgery. Just uh, good, good genetics for my mother, I guess. And um, suddenly, because it was still a taboo thing back then, uh, I didn't like the way fans would treat me. Most of the time, they, they just they didn't know what to, to make of me. They weren't sure if I was a man or a woman. It was kind of weird. And I had once one... Uh, one time in a, in, after a show, show, this guy came up to me and juggled my, my boobs in front of everybody and just hugely embarrassed me in front of everybody. And here, here I was, devastated because I had worked so hard my entire life to achieve these things in my mind that I thought was going to make everything better. And then it was still like high school. I was being tortured and uh, made fun of for, this, for trying to express this a little bit of who I was. And I was toning it big, down big time for the show, big, as much as I possibly could. And um, <clears throat> so it, it, it freaked me out. I, was, I got hugely, hugely depressed. And then anybody who's trans will tell you they, that part of this is you, you come out and you go back to the closet and you come back out and you go back to the closet. And we call that purging. Every time you go back, you purge this other life of who you used to be and it's purged. And uh, it's just a roller coaster ride of you know you, you you go down the road and then you can't take it anymore and then you then you switch you switch sides and then you do that road for a little while and then culture just becomes too unbearable so you switch back to have a normal life so it's this crazy flip flop thing and uh, hugely uncomfortable. So here I was I had a hit record on the radio a couple of hit records on the radio and I just flipped back to full on man mode and would would tape my boobs down so no one could see and uh, I was back to hiding myself again now I'm telling you this because the minute I started hiding myself again is where it was crazy the minute I started hiding myself all of this misfortune started happening to me Um, just things in the music business I don't need to get into the details of it but it's it's a nasty business and the success I was having was like it seemed like it was almost over like it just was just this giant one hit wonder kind of a thing. I had a couple of hit hit records, but it was like it was, seems like it was coming down almost as quickly as it started. And it was completely devastating to me. Completely devastating. So I started to let her back out again. And I was trying to find this balance of how can I just let her out a little bit and just see if it makes me any happier, any or less depressed. Now, at the time, I knew nothing about esoteric studies. I knew nothing about shadow work. I knew nothing about divinity, nothing about spirituality. All of that came much, much later. But instinctually, I made the connection between that peace and happiness of allowing that shadow self to come out and success. It was, it was very, very clear to me that there was a connection there. But I didn't know what that meant. I had no idea. It was too spooky, and I was too much of a scientific atheist to give it any kind of kind of a credulity, other than some sort of psychological connection. So, in the in the sense of time of balancing those two things and leaning very very heavily back into the man side again, I got married. I had a quote unquote normal life, 
and I would do my best to try to like maintain this androgynous state and my my, my ex-wife at the time she was, was very very supportive in that sense where she understood it was kind of like um, uh, don't ask don't tell kind of a thing you know what I mean she knew it was up but we just didn't talk about it but she gave me the space to kind of release that and um, I did that and then my career kind of like just just did this you know nothing great nothing bad just kind of maintained for a long 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 time it maintained like that for like a decade and somewhere in there you call it a midlife crisis I don't know what you want to call it but there was just this realization that once again that whenever I act like myself and let the full self out everything seems to go like bonkers and go really well for me and the minute I feel shame about that it's like someone turned the faucet off on my life and the and the hose the water just goes comes down right and I hit that midlife and I, I didn't know really what to do with it because the problem was I had already awakened to the non-dualism of things I, I understood completely as I do right now that nothing exists beyond the present moment that identity doesn't exist that there was no me I was already in that place this is this is 10 years into my marriage and around uh, and around 20 let's see 2012 2013 and I didn't know how to make sense of that because I knew that I wasn't transgender because there is no identity and but I did understand there the energy of the masculine and the energy of the, of the feminine and I didn't really understand uh, shadow work at this point other than my own suspicions that there was something related there between the shadow and the self and that it was doing something to the out, outside but the, the detail and the mechanics of how that was working, I didn't quite see yet. But after several years of, of just chewing on it and spiraling further into depression, it didn't matter how many gold records I hung on the wall. I just, I wanted to die. You know, platinum record, double platinum, Michael Jackson, didn't make a difference. It was just, I just wanted to die. And eventually enough was enough. I couldn't do it anymore. Enough was enough. And I took the plunge. I got divorced and just said, that's it. I'm going to be fully me. I'm going to fully let this express as is and just be the person that I, that I feel like I am. And I didn't really know where that was going to take me. It, didn't, it was very, very clear to me that I would lose everything. And I lost everything. I lost everything but my pride and my sense of being and and my sense of that I was doing the right thing, that I needed to do this. I, I had no idea why I needed to do that. I just knew it was something that I needed to do. Now, this thing that I'm going to show you, this is going to blow your mind. You ready for this? Now, I know I put a few pounds on the holidays, so don't judge me, but this is me. This is me back in the day before I was expressing myself. I was 400 pounds, over over 400 pounds. I really didn't know how much I weighed because the scale at Publix only went to 400 pounds. And uh, so I was very, very, very heavy. Uh, the pictures of me are touring and I'm in the back of the limousine there. So uh, the picture on the, on the very right there with the dog, at that moment in time, I had two songs in the Billboard Top 10, okay? So this is a very, very happy, happy, happy time for me. And that person on the right, do you see how miserable that person looks? Can you see the death in the eyes? Can you see the death in the eyes of the person on the left? Riding in the back of a limousine, getting ready to go perform a concert in front of thousands of people. There's still death there, right? That death is the death of the shadow. It's the shadow's death shining through my eyes. Now, if you look at the pictures in the middle, both of those pictures of me after I started decide after I decided to start expressing myself as is I lost 
about 220 pounds. And I noticed that when I took pictures of myself, I smiled for the first time. I had never smiled before. But now I had a big giant smile on my face. Just for being me. It came off so fast, it was crazy. It took no effort. It just fell off. And I was happy all the time. My life was just in shambles. I was in the process of losing everything. My career was all twisted and just, you know, people didn't really want to give me work and kind of weirded out, weirded out by it. None of it mattered. None of it mattered. I was so happy to allow that to finally come out. It's like all the pressure was released, all of this pent up aggression and frustration all of these negative feelings that was just feeling like a pressure boil a pressure cooker just building and building 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 and doing this was like going and just letting all that out just letting all of that out and there was nothing but peace <laughs> thank you guys i love you guys so much this the support of quotes you guys are so amazing in here i love you guys so all of that to say, that's the power of, of the shadow. And that was about, that happened about seven years ago. And the miracles that have happened in my life since then are unbelievable. Unbelievable. Every major fantasy I've had, every, every dream I've had, it's all come true since that time. That was the final thing. And I'm still working on it. I'm still not I'm still not even close to finishing this work. Not even close. Right? I'm still going to try to, I'm still working very, very hard on trying to find this center balance, this this androgynous balance. Because I think that that best reflects who I feel like I am. And it it reflects me spiritually. And that's just where I find myself. So that that's what I'm working on. And there's a lot of disease there. I'm not going to lie. There's still a lot of stuff to deal with there. And I used to go to shrinks. I used to see shrinks all the time for this, numerous ones. But I just decided that unless they're transgender, they have nothing to say to me. They have no idea what this is. And they've all been brainwashed by politics. But the, the most amount of work I've done myself, I've done on myself, by myself, for myself, without anyone's help but me. And it's just sitting there and doing the research. It's, it's sitting there and looking into yourself, taking time to meditate on yourself, taking time to find out who you are. Who am I besides uh, the idea of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, which is what we talk about a lot existentially. But who am I... Uh, in the dream who is that person and the answer to that is be whoever the fuck you want to be that's who that's who that is that's the answer to that you be whoever you want to be and you create that person every moment if you have to because it's your life it's your dream and you can do whatever you want in this dream and those are very 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 important lessons and I want you guys all to take that in. I want you to find the shadow in yourself. And I want you to use my screen for you to have the courage in you to release your shadow. Because if I was able to release that and I gave up a million dollar house, sports cars, the dream life, okay? A beautiful wife, friends. I lost so many friends. I gained new ones. I lost what I thought was my career. I lost so much. It was so much to give up, but it was worth every ounce of it. Was it scary? Yes, it was absolutely terrifying. It was by far the scariest thing I've ever done in my life, by a lot. But the reward from, from diving in and just going, I don't care what you think. This is me. This is me today. This is how I feel today. Take it or leave it. You're either, you're either my friend and you love me for who I am, or you're just not in my life. I still love you, 
but we just can't be together. You're not on my frequency. We're listening to, to, to different stations, right? So let me be your courage, right? Don't be outdone by me. If I can do it, you can do it. And I'm not here to say that you're transgender, okay? That's just a, it's a metaphor. It's uh, the shadow could be so many different things. We're all experiencing different things. We're all dealing with different stuff. But whoever you are when you're alone, be that. And don't compromise for anybody. Do that for a while. I know it's tough if you're in a relationship. That's where it gets really tough. That's where it gets really, really messy. But you've got to spend some time with yourself just being you without pretense. You have to have that experience of self without pretense. Otherwise, you never get in, you never get to get in touch with the, the true you. Now, what does this have to do with that saying? All of that stuff I talked about is in the dream. It's, it's all lost in time. I just told you a whole story about my childhood, which never happened because all of it is right here and right now. It's a dream from the here and now. It's not to say it isn't true, but it isn't true in the sense of satsang. From the perspective of the father, none of it is true. From the perspective of the son, every bit of that is true and very, very heavily, heavily felt. Heavily felt. I barely got through it, honestly, without, without crying. But... Um, but two things are true at the same time, which we talk about all the time in here. The perspective of the father, the one who's eternally present, the one who's eternally with satsang, and just sees everything as a dream with absolute indifference and love. And then there's the perspective of the son, in the dream, suffering. And the one who's suffering is the one who has to do the shadow work. That's the one who has to do the shadow work. And the suffering will not stop until you do the shadow work. The shadow is how the adversary messes with you. That's how, it, that's how it's done. You can turn off the TV, you can turn off your friends, you can turn off life and be free of the adversary. But the adversary is still gonna get through your shadow and cry and create all kinds of havoc in your life all the frustration that's where it comes from it comes from right there it comes from that shadow but when you integrate this shadow and you make it a part of the whole self and you find the aspects of the shadow that you can love and that that you do love and make a part of who you've become then there's nothing stopping you anymore. There's no more pretense. There's, no, there's nothing else for the adversary to work with. When you don't care what people think and you don't care um, about being judged, then you can't feel shame. How empowering is that? That's amazing empowerment. It doesn't mean be an asshole. It just means you've risen above being judged, which is very powerful. It's a very, very powerful state. So, again, I'm going to give you a little uh, biblical quote here. And, again, I'm not trying to convert anybody to any kind of religion. I'm anti-religion across the board. But, uh, once again, I do find these, these aspects, these teachings, in our most sacred texts, because they, they help. That they're, These are the most profound things ever written. These... These sayings and, and teachings are written down by the smartest people in the world at that time to convey a very, 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 very big idea into the smallest parable. And that's what the Bible is, and that's what all religious texts are. So there's lots of things you can get from all of them when you know how to read it. And the reading is all about the self, the no-self. The gnosis of the no self. So, all of that to say, there is this um, quote in the Book of Thomas, um, and it's a, a quote from Jesus. It says, uh, "You must bring forth what is within you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what is within you will destroy you. But if you bring forth what is within you, what is within you will save you."
And when I really processed that, it changed my life. I wouldn't have done it had I not read that. But reading that was like it aligned everything just right. And I was like, oh, there it is. Life is not going to improve until I do that. And then that was the conviction I needed. It was right there in the holiest book in the world telling me what I needed to do. And so I did it. And I'm here to tell you it was the right decision. Was it painful? Yes. Very. But worth every bit of it. Every bit of it. And that's my story. That's my story. The dream. How many out there can resonate with what I just told you? How many out there can see aspects of yourself that you're not letting out? Aspects of yourself that you hide from the world? It's okay. It's okay. No matter what, you're loved. No matter what. And when you learn that, that's what learning how to love yourself is all about. Learning how to love yourself is self-worth. And you can't love anyone else until you know how to love yourself. There's no way to love yourself if you've got this big giant shadow, this big giant part of yourself that you refuse to even acknowledge exists. That's not love. Shame isn't love. Fear isn't love. I'm here for love. I'm here for healing. I'm here for growth. So that's my perspective on it. And I hope you guys will do the work too. I hope you will work on yourselves. I hope you will work on your shadows. Boy, we got the crowd going crazy. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yes. I love you guys too. Kurt says, I came from a loving family for years. Then COVID hit. I'm loved, but not really a part of them anymore. We live in two different realities, or so it seems. Hard for me to connect with normal folks. Yeah, I understand that too. I understand that too. You have to find forgiveness, Kurt, with that. I know that that's not exactly what we're dealing with with the shadow, but that what you're talking about is you have to realize that War World War Three is already here. It's not coming. We're in the midst of it. We're, we're probably five years deep into it. And it's a psychological war. And the people that you can't agree with are casualties of war. And they could say the same about you. It's a division of the mind. It's just a war in heaven. It's a fractal of the, the war between the adversary and the father. And it's eternal war. It never stops. And we experience it in the dream as a fractal. And it's a psychological war. And it's got half of us feeling a certain way and the other half of us feeling a certain way. And that, that reconciling that, we can have hope for that, but we can also just be grateful that they're not using bullets anymore. Instead of bombs, they're just using the news. Fact checkers. Okay. So if, all that to say, find forgiveness. Just know what you know. Try to have an open mind. But stay, stay sure in what you know. And, and you don't feel like you have to convince anybody. If they don't believe you or are not on your page, they're just casualties of war. As sad as that is. This is a great group here tonight. Thank you for mentioning that, Cosmo Girl. I hope all of you guys will just take a moment after this to give me a like. It really, really makes a huge difference. Uh, this is a small channel. I know Five Tribe is blowing up with hundreds of thousands of subs, but uh, this one is my side channel. 
And uh, YouTube isn't really going to recommend it too much unless I get a bunch of likes. So that would really, really be helpful. And I, I really just want to reach as many people as I can and give them that virtual hug. Don't you guys want that? I want that. It's fun. It's fun. Well, that's about all I have tonight. It's actually a short one to make up for the last two, which were an hour and 30 minutes each. <laughs> and uh, we'll just keep it easy tonight. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys all for showing up. If you have any questions or comments, please, now's the time to, uh, to drop it in here. I'm going to show you this diagram too. This is from my book. This diagram is actually a diagram that Carl Jung had come up to describe the shadow self. Take a picture of that and study it. Just take a picture of the screen. And this is like a, it's the same thing as this um, that Joseph Campbell had, had made, but this is Carl Jung's version and it's, it's much, much more detailed. And if you meditate on that, you can kind of get a, a, a deep sense of how your mind is, is par compartmentalized. And you can kind of see how the mind works and it gives you a better, uh, a little bit easier way of using your meditation to sort things out. Thank you guys very much for showing up once again and being a part of the playground. Did you guys have fun? I had fun. Shell says, what is mana? Energy, love. Energy and love. It's a million different words. You can talk about it. I think love is the best way to define these things. Because it's easy to feel, is that love or is that not love? Right? Instead of trying to think about feeling the energy, is it love or is it not love? That's easy. <laughs> awesome. All right, I'm out. I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.